Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Horace Lightning Takes. And let's get right to the news. Yeah, we've actually got a lot to cover today. First up, we'll talk about the Master and Apprentice little thing they threw up on Disney+. Plus. Eight minutes of pure disappointment. Of stuff we've seen before elsewhere? That's why it was disappointing. Yeah. Because we've literally seen all of that in different places in now the marketing of up to Ahsoka. Together. That's that's a waste. I mean, it's, they hyped it up, and then I hyped it up, and I thought it was going to be actually yeah. important, you and it was nothing. You did hype it up. I blame you. Disney. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, and I then think they that's... moved it like it was going to be important between these episodes, and everyone thought it was important. I, I wasn't think, the only one who thought it was important. I think the biggest problem is it doesn't actually address why the master and apprentice relationship is important, or no. the Anakin and Ahsoka relationship. It's kind of. I mean, it's more about mm-hmm. Dave Filoni, which is cool. I like yeah. Dave. Don't get me wrong. I think it's. I think it's fine. If you hadn't seen any of this before, you might have really enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it along the way, but to have this be what they hyped up In the fact is disappointing. <laughs> that they wanted to talk about this whole thing is they were stressing the master and apprentice relationship, both on screen and, of course. Behind the camera with George, George and Dave. And Dave. Yeah. But they opened it up with a quote with Yoda talking about the Sith. Because he said, always two there are, a master well, and apprentice. No more, no less. And referring, that is when he was talking about Sith. He is referring to the Sith in that moment, but it is also a very important relationship to the Jedi as well. Mm-hmm. I get what you're saying, but it's it's, it's but, one of those core things in Star Wars. You can't say that about the Jedi. It's always two there are, a master and apprentice. No, because, because there isn't always two. That. Well, there's more than, well, <laughs> not like always, councils actually. Councils and groups of Jedi. Not always. Sometimes there isn't a whole lot of Jedi, mm-hmm. even though they are. They're just hiding. But it was just scenes. a really weird use of this quote. No, like, I don't, I don't I think did, it was I a didn't weird like use. It. I, I think that's a perfectly fine use of the quote, because it's implying that one of the most important things a Jedi can do is to train the next generation, whereas the Sith are kind of the opposite. They're trying to use the next generation to, to gain power, and eventually will get thwarted and killed by that next generation and Mm. taken over. So it's kind of like a strange uh, dichotomy there between the two. It's very similar Mm -hmm. and different at the same time. So I don't have a problem with them using what is clearly meant to be a quote about the Sith. All right. Next, Disney put up another character poster for the show, and it was Carson. (laughs) You got mad at this one, too. I did, because as I'm going to put this one side by side, they used the Carson they used in the Mandalorian Season 3 poster. It's the exact same Carson. So, to the light of our Discord and to all of you who are following, you're going to see some images going on uh, through this episode. Carson's appearing in more than just a... I decided to help Disney out, and I made some character <laughs> posters for them, too. They could have just hired you. You would have done it for I know, free, I actually. I did a pretty good job on some of these, and yeah, I they slapped these things together. And Yeah, they yeah. were pretty lazy with this one. So, I decided to make them some posters, too, for yeah. other projects they might consider Carson for. I think Carson and She-Hulk could be... That could work. It's the only you, poster I didn't make. I think make. if anybody could have saved She-Hulk... Well, you didn't make the She-Hulk. I thought you were going to make the She-Hulk one. No, I didn't no, have time So now I'm hyping them up for a She-Hulk Carson poster, and uh, you didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. But you could have saved it. No, you can instead look at the other Carson <laughs> posters I made while we talk about the next piece of news. Okay. Ivana Sankno. She's Shin Hadi for anyone who needs that clarification. Shin Hadi. Shin Hadi. Sorry, Shin Hadi <laughs> from Esoga. The meme, the legend, the hottie. I don't think she's a meme, is she? I mean, oh, I think she's butt, a meme. I think the butt shots are the meme. She doesn't get... The, the the butt shots aren't even her. I thought there were some. No, I don't think we got any butt... I, we've got, all I we've know got is... got Hera butt shots and we've got Sabina butt shots. I've heard a lot about butt shots being a thing on the internet right now. I don't know where you go on the internet that I don't. I thought it's all like... A, but, I haven't actually seen it. I've seen people mm-hmm. talking about it. I know. I, I feel like I'm guilty, but I actually have Shin's not seen it. Shin's outfit doesn't really work for butt shots. Uh, tell she's that to like Shin. A, no. She's like the new Wednesday Adams. She's she's the it girl, the the crazy squirrel energy. But we have a interview with some uh, new quotes from her that came out. Of course, the interview was done before everything because Once of the strike. Ago, yeah. But we're going to go over these quotes anyway because I find it interesting. When asked to describe her character... She said some uh, interesting things. She said, Shin's very calculated and at times impatient. She is a seeker. She is only in the beginning of finding her own voice. And really, that's all I can say. Throughout getting to discover her, she has taught me a lot about understanding the intensity within someone. I really think that there might be quite a few people who may resonate with some sides of her and her desire to understand her surroundings and understand something that is true to her nature. 
I think she's going to be a, I don't want to say a big character going forward, but I think she survives this show and will be seen again. Oh, I think so too. I think she's definitely more than meets the eye. I think she is something. Maybe that's why Balon sought her out to make her his apprentice, his Padawan. I've seen some theories out there that Balon could be Papa Balon, that maybe it's his daughter. I've, I've said that once. Oh, maybe that's where I saw these theories. <laughs> I have said it on the channel. I've seen other people though. I've also theorized that maybe she well, was a, a Dathomirian. You also theorized that uh, Morak was a... You can't prove that I'm wrong. Hmm. He turned into dust before we could see his face. Sure. Before we could see that he was a clone of Anakin. <laughs> but that's not the point. I do think that there's a deeper story with her. Balon, we kind of know what he was, what he is. We don't know exactly his purpose, but her, she's a wild card. We don't know why Balon sought her out, why he chose to take a Padawan. It is interesting that he took a Padawan. Yeah, so I want to know where they're going to go with her story. I hope we do get some more. I mean, we are halfway through, and, you know, we could use a, a few more tidbits of information about I Balin. I almost and feel like just that quote is implying we're going to hear more about what Shin is and where she's from or yeah, interesting probably. things about her. I mean, we could have some cool things happening in the, the other galaxy. Maybe that is where she's from. You kind of theorized that. I did, it's or not... that she was a night sister and doesn't she know got, she was. She rode in on a Pergil. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Ezra can do it. Then she was asked about the late Ray Stevenson, who portrays her on-screen master. And she couldn't express enough or properly, I mean, you know, their relationship and how much of, a, like, a kindred spirit they found in each other in the time that they spent shooting Ahsoka together and how this kind of, like, impacted her. She said, We were inseparable. His impact on my life is immeasurable. And so is the ache of losing him. I miss him terribly. I carry the light that was within him. I think of him every day. I only hope to honor him and all that he has given me. I'm so grateful the show has given me the opportunity to know him. Words don't do it justice. He really is a gift. See, that's part of the reason why I hope she does go on. Mm -hmm. hope they do make something out of her. Because I think Balin is a very interesting character. I mean, I think again, so too. I, again, we don't know a ton, but he's played extremely well. Some... We, we talk about it with Gideon all the time. Sometimes you don't even need the backstory. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just get drawn to a character because of the actor's way of portraying them. And that, it, it's happening here with Balon again. He's such an interesting character that I'm almost rooting for him because he has <laughs> such a strong it's, presence. I would be sad if he won. And I think I think to a degree he could get a win because I think Thrawn's going to get a win. So he might kind of indirectly mm. get a win. Well, we've got four episodes to go. And I think we're going to see more on Shin and Balon's backstories I hope Before so. this is over. I hope so. If not, I think I think Shin is definitely going to be a character we're going to see more of. And yeah. that would be cool because it'll be passing on the master and apprentice relationship there too. And don't forget, this next episode is directed by Dave Filoni as well. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. It's all on the line here. This is Dave's true time to shine <laughs> or fizzle away. We shall see. Well, they're putting it on the big screen, so it's better be pretty good. I think you also wanted to mention... The HasLab project. Yeah, the ghost it actually got it fully funded. Got fully funded. Not only fully funded, but like fully, fully funded. Fully. And then some. All the tiers unlocked. Yeah. It looks like it ended at around 21,768 backers yeah. when it had a target of 8,000. Yeah. And the last tier was at 17. And then the last few days, a lot of doubt about even hitting that yeah, 17. Just and then it just hit that. Picked up like, pace and flew. Took off like a, like a cargo ship. Or like a pergo. <laughs> <laughs> Hera wouldn't like the comparison. Yeah. She's probably more okay with Pergo. She hated the Pergo. I know. I, I am disappointed, though, that they made... That if you fully funded it up to past all of the tiers and got to the to the Zeb tier, that it allowed you then to purchase two more the figures. two more figures instead of just throwing Here's them two in. two more figures. I mean, at 21,000, they should have made that they the have, final tier. They yeah. should be like, you know what, guys? You backed it by almost 5,000 more than our last tier. We're going to give you these two figures. Well, they were giving one every 2,000. Yeah, so here's... So the other two thousand. were technically... <laughs> yeah. yes. Would have been a funded thing. Yeah, and I did not back this one. No, you did I not. I did not because my Razor Crest and my uh, Sail Barge are still sitting in a box because just room is at a premium. Because mm -hmm. I have a lot of stuff already. Yeah, those are big items. They're very big, yeah. And mm -hmm. I've been meaning to try to find a place of prominence for them, but it's it's always difficult with that much stuff. That big <laughs> stuff, I should say. Yeah. But yeah, fully funded, which awesome for vintage. Hey, okay, we collection did buy back the Rancor that went nowhere. Yeah, yeah, but no, I, I, you know, vintage collection keeps pulling through. 
they passed the first Haslab project. They, the Razor Crest passed with flying colors. This is so. Well, wasn't the Rancor the only Black Series project? If you don't count the Reva lightsaber, which Nobody is a Black counts Series. the Reva lightsaber. Well, yeah, but I mean, technically, that's a Black Series, but it's, it's more a like a play. Poplica. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, a different player. category entirely. Yes, but the the other the three vintage collection have all passed. So mm-hmm. Hasbro oftentimes seems to think that the vintage collection isn't where it's at. They think Black Series is the the king and. When things like this happen, you do wonder if uh, maybe uh, there's more vintage collection three and three quarter fans out there than they realize. They've had longer to establish themselves. Certainly, since long. day one. Plus, they well, can make that... scale ships. You can't a scale ship for the Black Series would be much too large. I would be okay with. I'd make room for that. There would have to be a room for that. Yeah, we have a room for that. No, you wouldn't be able to really. That, get that's a, the sad no. part is we have a, a room dedicated to action figures, and there's no room in that room for the ghost. Or the sail barge, or the, or the razor crest. Or the razor crest, yeah. But anyway, so that's cool. Uh, congrats to everybody who uh, backed it, and we'll be getting it sometime next year. I think next fall is the uh, estimated date. Anyway, that's all we got for you this time. Now it's your turn. Take to the comments below. Tell us what you think of any and all of today's news, and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.